Oh, I'm so happy to see y'all. I've been, I ain't seen y'all in so long. I can't believe y'all actually came down here and gonna stay on the farm with me for a little while. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know it's hard being away from them cell phones, but go ahead, just put them cell phones down. You ain't gonna get no signal out here anyway. <laughs> now, um, you know, I, I like the, I like these woods over here. And uh, the main reason is because they're haunted. You know, we got ghosts out here, demons and witches. And I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> That's why I brought you out here. So, you know, we got a nice little fire going. And just just sit on back and relax. And uh, I, I really can't believe you let me bring you out here. That was... That wasn't too smart or, you know, that, that kind of dumb, tell you the truth. But, you know, i get you back in one piece, baby. Don't worry about it. But I'm going to tell you, though. I'm fixing to scare the dog mess out of y'all tonight. <laughs> now, go on here. Sit on back. Grab them marshmallows over there and, and them Hershey bars and... Get that gram, gram cracker and all that over there. I'm going to make me a couple of them s'mores now, you know. Make my marshmallow a little crispy now. I like it a little crispy. Not too much. Just a little crispy, you know. And go ahead and, and get comfortable. Because I'm finna scare the dog mess out of you. The first story I'm going to tell you. It's called the Scarecrow. Now, you know, out here, out here in the country, man, uh, Scarecrows, they ain't just, you know, you see them on movies and TV and stuff, and a lot of people don't even, you know, think it's real, but they real now. It's something that, you know, really come in handy, because if you don't put something out there, them crows eat everything you got. But, you know, nowadays, they... Got the technology and the, and the science and all that, so they don't use the scarecrows, you know, the way they used to. But it's one scarecrow to this day. <laughs> Let me tell you about it. This this boy named Jake. Now Jake was walking through the cornfields, and he remembered an argument he had had that morning with his daddy. Now. He told his daddy, but they only been up a month. They don't need changing. That's what he screamed at his daddy. His daddy said, yeah, they do, Jake. Every single one of them. And I want that first scarecrow replaced by sundown. Now, that boy took that heavy bag and, yeah, slung over his shoulder. And he cursed at himself for not thinking of something more clever to say. Now, he grabbed that stepladder in his other arm. And he walking around. And, uh, you know, thinking about ways he wanted to fight his daddy and bust his daddy upside the head because he hated doing all that, you know, all that work in the fields. Y'all city folk don't know about that. He said, I do all the work. And just one, I like to say some say so and, and how and when things get done. You know, it ain't like, um, you know, back out here, your parents rule. Ain't no talking back. It ain't no uh, reasoning. <laughs> you know? My dad wake up and say, Son, I want you to uh, go out there and cut that grass. Cut the front yard. And when you're done, cut the back yard. And I want you to get all them leaves in the pile and burn that pile. And that's the deal. <laughs> you know, it ain't no... It ain't no... Um, you know, ain't no, hey, I cut the front and then, you know, I'll give you something. Uh, you know, I'll give you a little extra. Uh -uh, let's go out there, cut it up. That's the deal. So Jake really didn't like this, but, you know, he had to deal with because that's just what life is. So he coming up to this shape. And he put the bag down and put the ladder down. And then he look at this shape. Now, this shape is a scarecrow. And he said, these things last almost two months if you care for them, right? 
But his daddy didn't wait to the last minute. His daddy wanted him to take care of them scarecrows early. Now he pulled off the hood. And he was met with a bunch of buzz and horse flies. And he had just enough time to see. The look in that scarecrow's eyes. And the dried blood coming from his nose. Right before the scarecrow head fell forward and died. And Jake said, huh. I guess Pa was right. These things don't last as long as I thought they would. <laughs> Can you believe that? The only farm still in this area that use scarecrows. They scarecrows is living people. They cuts their tongue out. So they can't scream. And they fill them full of hay. So, don't try to, don't try to take no selfies if you come across that scarecrow. <laughs> so, what you think about that one? What, that ain't scary enough? Okay. Let me tell you another one. Let me tell you about the thing in the fields. Now, this one is one that I've seen personally. So, Now, when I was young, I lived on a farm, you know, with my parents and all that. And I was the only child. And, you know, we weren't no big commercial farm. We were just a you know, little family type thing. And we had five cows, three horses, a small herd of goats, two dogs. And, and we had a nice little chicken coop. Now, we had some Indian runner ducks, and we kept mostly as pets. And we didn't really make no money off the place, you know, just enough to just sustain the animals and a little extra for ourselves. Now, money was enough to take a decent vacation every couple of years. Now, Dad had this other job in town as an insurance agent. He was, you know, he was an insurance man all through the, you know, everybody knew about him. And he was the only one around, really. So he like, if you need some insurance, you want to help. Now, the town wasn't no more than about 1,500 people. And Mom gave horse riding lessons. And, you know, we weren't rich, but we were comfortable, though, you know. Now, it was really an easy life, or at least it could have been a lot worse. I went to school. Daddy went to work. Mama took care of the animals. We all had dinner together at night. And, I, you know, I go to bed while Mama and Daddy had a beer or two and watch the news. And sometimes at night I would hear things outside, mostly just normal stuff. The cows or horses would get spooked by a coyote or something. Or I would hear the dogs chasing a rabbit, barking their heads off. Every once in a while we find a chicken dead or something. Dad always tell me about it and never let me see the body, although I always want to see the body. And he'd keep mom and I inside until, you know, he had gone out. And did whatever he did with the body and throw salt out, throw um, that salt dust over the blood and stuff. And life would go on as normal. Now, I assumed it was just the foxes. And I had seen a couple of them out in the past over the years, you know, slinking around back and forth through the grass. Now, the summer when I was 10 years old, I remember helping Mama change the bedding in the horse stalls. And we heard a huge, you know, a huge ruckus or something, man, going on outside. And if, it, you know, you ain't never heard the sound of a horse in pain, you don't want to, man. Trust me, man. It sound almost like a person screaming. And, well, that's what we all heard. And one of our horses, the Palomino, uh, came running into the barn with a wound on his left thigh. He had four long marks, like claw marks, run across his body for about a foot. He had blood running down his leg, and he was limping real bad. And I was so scared of the sight by that much blood. And my mama locked the horse in the stall and made me go inside with one of the dogs. She told me to lock the door and stay inside until she came to get me. And, and you know, I did. And eventually, mama came inside and told me that the horse had hurt herself on the barbed wire that ran the perimeter of the pasture. Now, we owned more land beyond that, but it was mostly forested. 
Now, I guess I believed that at the time, but then that night, I noticed daddy was being real quiet. And mama was talking a lot more than she normally did. She was being, you know, really animated. And I noticed daddy got his rifle out and set it by the back door. And usually he only did that when the coyotes had been acting up. Now that night I went to bed as normal, but I had trouble falling asleep. And I turned on my desk lamp and went to go read, you know, little comic books or something. You know, that's the kind of stuff we do fun in the country, man. <laughs> we read comic books, man. Back in the day, y'all, some of y'all don't know about that, but, you know, and, uh, and I was reading, I think it was X-Men or something, and I heard the back doors open, so I went looking out, and I could see my daddy by the porch light, lighting the cigarette and holding the rifle under his arm, and he started walking over to the driveway and then turned to follow the fence line, and I couldn't sleep until I knew my daddy was back safe, man. And I kept coming downstairs with the excuse to get in the water to see if he was back in the house yet. And each time, all I saw was Mama sitting on the couch in the living room, staring at a blank TV screen, looking weird. And looking all worried. And letting out a sigh every now and then. And then about 4 in the morning, I think Dad finally came back. And I was so tired, but I was relieved. And I went on and fell asleep as soon as I knew he was home. He never told me what he did that night, but I never thought to ask. Now, two months later, I was back in school, and uh, it was raining a lot. You know, it was fall time, and uh, and this day was no different. All I could hear from my bedroom was rain hitting the ground, and we had the aluminum, hitting the aluminum roof on that chicken coop. And it was light thunder in the distance, and it was slowly getting closer, I thought I heard a coyote yapping around, you know, around the garage. Well, it could have been one of them dogs. And I looked out, straining my eyes to see, you know, whatever they may have been. Now, in a quick little, quick little moment, I saw a distant lightning flash or something. And I saw something in that flash, and it looked like a person. But a person hunched over and with a real long stomach. Like, they torso and stuff were real long, though. And it was tall, like taller than my daddy. And he was a good 6'4". So I just barely caught a glimpse of it near the side of the garage. And the light had faded and I, ain't, you know, I didn't see it again that night. And there was another dead chicken the next morning. The third in three weeks. So uh, I told daddy what I seen. As soon as I told him that, like, his face went, like, his face went like, um, like, you know, you can just tell when I said that, it messed with him. You tell it really messed with him. It wasn't like, not just like basic, conf like usually you tell somebody like that, they'd be like, huh? But when I told him that, he looked like, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my God. Like, you can just tell, like I just told him the worst thing ever. So, um, you know, it kind of it freaked me out a little bit because, you know, I wasn't really used to seeing my dad look scared, man. You know what I'm saying? And um, until, you know, he told me that the storm was playing tricks on me. And, um, you know, I went on and accepted that because it's my, you know, I listen to Pops, man. So Now, four months after that, we lost a cow. In the middle of the night, we all woke up at the same time. And it was a bunch of noise in the pasture, but only real quick. And a crying of a dying animal and, you know, this real animal-like yell that I never heard before. You know, it was a weird, it was a weird yell, man. Never heard nothing like that before. So my daddy ran up to my room and I could hear him running up the stairs when he was coming, man. He had that rifle in his hand he opened up my door and he saw I was awake and told me to stay inside no matter what and try to go back to sleep. Now, of course, you know, ain't no way I'm going back to sleep, man. But I did stay in my room with the blanket held tight around my shoulders and staring out the window. Now, about 10 minutes later, I had heard some gunshots out there. I don't know what he was shooting at. And whatever it was, it must have been a thing that attacked the cow. Or maybe he shot the cow trying to put the cow out of his misery. I don't know, man. Now, my daddy, he never, rarely, if ever... Like, talked about that night. And I found out later he, you know, got to the cow only to find it was ripped open on the ground, bleeding from the stomach. 
And the shots I heard were him shooting the cow in the head. I don't know why he shot it multiple times, but, you yeah. know. And it kept going like that for years. A chicken or a duck here and there, something bigger every now and then. It sounds crazy, but I almost came to think, like, it became part of the farm life for me. And I only ever caught glimpses of the thing until what came next. And it terrified me, man. It happened in the middle of the day. Over the course, it was a long weekend. My parents had gone to Seattle to see my uncle who was sick. And it was a Saturday afternoon. I was 17. And I was out in the barn putting out food for the horses and the dogs. And the horses were running out in the pasture and the dogs were asleep in the corner of one of the horse stalls. And I heard something moving around in that tall grass outside in the pasture. Now the dogs looked around a bit but didn't really seem to mind. And I assumed there was just one of the horses waiting for me to leave so they could eat. And I kept going about, you know, what I was doing at seven and a little while later, I thought I heard some breathing. Now, I turned to look, and it was standing in the door. Man, that thing was tall, man, and hunched over. And the sun was coming in, streaming behind it. Like, you know how the sun be lighting up the dust, and, the dust, the dust particles and stuff up in there? It was doing that. And it was looking at me. Like it was... Like it was trying to think, should I go over there and eat that boy or, or what? And I remember, you know, I'm 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 in my, under my, under my breath. I'm scared to say anything loud, but I'm down there cussing to myself like, oh, I done messed up, <laughs> done messed up this time, man. And I turned and I went running fast as I could to the house, not even thinking, man. And uh, it was just, I running out of pure, pure panic. Like, I don't even, you know, I didn't try to run. It just happened, man. And that thing was behind me, moving. And I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a farm boy, man. I'm a country boy. I know how to run, man. And that thing was behind me, man. It wasn't breathing hard. It wasn't making no noise. But it was just behind me, man. And I heard the feet hitting the ground. Boom, 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 boom. And I got to the house, opened up the door and slammed it behind me and locked it fast as I could. Went through the house, locking every door, every window, closing the blinds. And I could hear that thing just at the back door, growling. And the dogs was barking at it. But they wouldn't try to attack it, man. You know, the dogs knew better. They was like, I guess they figured this ain't no, you know, we ain't leave that thing alone, man. And it roared at the dogs, man. They ran off, went to go hide, man. Ain't that something? Man, best friend. So I went up to my parents' room, got the rifle and loaded it, and set up a chair in the living room facing the back door, and I'm just waiting. And I could hear the thing walking around the house. And I could hear their feet crunching on the gravel in the driveway. And the wooden planks on the back deck. And it just kept walking back and forth. And I thought about trying to look through a window to see it. But I was too scared, man. And eventually, after hours of hoping it would go away, the sun went down. And I turned on all of the outside lights and went up to my room and opened the window with the rifle in my hand. Hoping to be able, you know, I'd get a good look at it. I could go and pick it off from above and I'd be done with it. And I saw that thing lurking just beyond the glow from the porch light. Head long, long arms, man. Almost like, almost like dang uh, tentacles from a dang octopus or something, man. And I walked on her. The knees was like kind of bent like, you know, like animal legs. And it was by the chicken coop and it disappeared from the view. And I heard the chicken screaming, man. I felt bad for them, man. They in there hollering and screaming. And I seen that thing come back out with a dead bloody chicken in his hand. And it bit off one of the wings. And, uh, and the jaws had slime coming down and drool, man. 
and dropped the bird at his feet, man. Then I uh, looked at me and seen me in the window, made eye contact with me and turned away again back to the chickens. And they came back with another one. And they tore that bird open right in front of me. And I dropped it again and went back again and again. And I should have shot it, man. But I was so jacked up trying to figure out what it was doing. Then it hit me. It was a show of power. It was showing me that it was stronger than me. That it could do whatever it wanted because I couldn't stop it. And at the same time, I felt powerless, boy, and sick. Because what that thing was saying was true. <laughs> you know, it was just a thing in me. And I ain't stand a chance against this thing. I'm too scared. I can't even hold the dang gun straight even if I wanted to shoot it. And then I was was sick because I seen just how smart this thing was. You know, it wasn't just no ravaged, savage animal. The thing actually had sense. And the thought just shook me out of my, like, days. And I remember, okay, look, I got this rifle. I'm going to have to do something. I can't let this thing go. I can't, how am I going to sleep with this thing out there lurking around like that? And as it was going back to the chickens, I said, next time it come out, I'm going to blow his dang head smooth off. Now, it come back to the porch, arrogant, almost walking like George Jefferson. You know, got that, just popping his shoulders side to side almost, man. And, and uh... And the arms were so long like the chicken, you know, just dragging the ground. He's standing up. I put that rifle to my eye and tried to steady myself. And my heart was beating so hard, I could see the rifle shaking with each heartbeat. I could hear it pounding in my ears. I raised, it raised that body of that chicken to his mouth. And just about when it was finna put that chicken head inside, I squeezed that trigger. In the crack of that gun, boy, you should have heard the echo, man. And I heard that thing howl, man. Ooh, ooh. Painful, loud. I know I scared the junk out of it because he didn't think I was going to fight back. Mm-hmm. I hit it on the outside on the, on the shoulder. And that thing ran off into the night, and I never saw it again. And it was still out there, though. It still killed the chickens and other things, you know. And it did it more often than, it, you know, it usually would do it. And I'm telling you all this now because my parents died, you know, just three weeks ago. Killed in a collision with a drunk driver, man. And, you know, and of course the driver survived. And they left me to farm, and I'm going to stay here with my own family. You know, that's what I was telling myself at the time. I'm going to stay here, and i stay with my family. We're going to raise them up. And I had me a good wife, you know, good kids. You know? You know? And I go back... Yeah, well, I, we, I did move out, but I go back to that farmhouse, you know. I went by, and I went by myself, you know, when I do go. I go by myself, and I think about my mama and daddy. But today, today I come back. Today I come back by myself, as usual, but I come back for a different reason, now. Huh? Today I come back to take back my rifle of mine. I got my daddy rifle next to me on the table. And it's almost about night time. And I done brought a bunch of them portable halogen lights to set up around the house. And I done brought my own shotgun too. I got everything I needed. And I, and I sat there in the same spot when I was a kid. I sat right there in that living room. But this time, I didn't, I ain't locked the front door. I locked all the other doors, locked all the other windows, but I left that front door open. And I waited. 
and I waited. I was going off caffeine pills and coffee. I had slept about two, three days straight first to make sure I was ready. And I waited. And just when I thought, just when I thought that, you know, maybe he was dead now. Maybe he went on to go haunt somebody else. I heard the porch creaking. I heard them steps coming towards that door. And I held my daddy rifle, pointed at that door with the shotgun sitting right there ready, right next to it. This time I wasn't gonna hit him in the shoulder. I was gonna hit him right between the eyes. As soon as he came through that door, he came in fast, but he wasn't faster than that bullet though. And I hit him now, I hit him. I know for a fact I hit him. Blood went everywhere. I don't know if I hit him that second time, but I know I hit him that first one. <laughs> but he got away. I wanted to go back again. Uh, but, you know, a creature kind of smart. I'm thinking, why not push my luck, you know? Uh, I got him the first two times, but that third time, <laughs> you know, you, you, you know, God give you a little grace, but uh, if I couldn't get him in the first two tries, then that third try, he might mess around and get me, you know. Y'all need me to come tell you these creepy stories now. <laughs> what, you don't believe me? Wow, that's crazy. I wouldn't lie to you. Have I ever lied to you? I ain't never lied to you all the time I've known you. What am I lie to you for now? Okay, I got another story for you then. Since you don't believe the other one I'm told and you think I'm just sitting up here making it up, check this one out. Now, this one about a 15 year old boy in a small town over there in Maryland. He sat down at his computer after getting home from school one day. And he turned it on and he logged in. You know, one of them um, instant messaging things back in the day, man. And he was surprised. See, he got a message from a classmate of his who ain't come to school that day. And you know, when folk don't come to school, that's a big deal, man. You know, you got you to gotta see why they didn't come, you know. So it, it was two words and it said, please come. Now, the boy was confused it, and he sent a reply back asking why he wasn't at school that day. Two more messages and 15 minutes with no response. He said he going to get on his bike and head on over there. And it was a short ride, only about five minutes away. And when he got to the house, he seen the door was unlocked. And inside, he seen some blood that was dried up, but it was splattered all over the walls and floors. And he seen a, a, something he couldn't really make out, but it was a figure crumpled up against the far wall. He got closer, he realized it was a person, but it was missing an arm and a leg. And he had these bloody streaks on the floor that led away from the body into the kitchen. The boy slammed the door closed and immediately called 911 on the cell phone. Now, now when the police got there, they found three bodies. And, and then they found the tracks leading from the house to the back door. Now, the forensic report said that the entire family... The boy's classmate and his, uh, his, his parents and stuff had been killed the night before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one to mess with you, one. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Who called him? Who sent him the, the message then if they was already dead? See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now look, if you ain't scared yet, then I don't know what's wrong with you. So, uh, uh, we're going to try some more stories the next night because uh, 
that's all I got right now. I'm sleeping, man. I ain't been sleeping uh, all day long. I've been out here setting up these tents and getting that barbecue ready. Them were some good ribs I made, you wonder. Mm-hmm, I told you. See, the secret to making some good ribs, don't be looking at them folk up there on the Food Network doing all that extra stuff and and cooking it three, four days in the smoker. You ain't got to cook. If you got to cook your rib three, four days, something wrong. Give me about two, three hours. I have you some of the best ribs you've never ate, I'm trying to tell you. And uh, you don't need all that uh, dry rubs and and all that extra stuff. All I need is yeah, give, uh, give me some of that larry seasoning salt, some onion powder, some, uh, shoot, that's about all I need. Then uh, for the salt, it don't matter what salt you pick. You can get Sweet Baby Ray's. You can get some KC Matter Piece. You can get some of that crab. So you want to keep it old school, you can get some of that open pit. It don't matter to me. <laughs> so don't get that song. I'll tell you how to make some good rig. But come on, y'all. Let's go on here getting you sleeping, babes. It's time to go to sleep. i tell y'all some more stories tomorrow.